Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're answering a question from one of our pro members who wanted to know how to create a trefoil or torus knot in Cinema 4D. You can get your Cinema 4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts pro member at cgshortcuts.com forward slash membership or over on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So if you do a Google search for trefoil knot, you might come across this image showing the shape we want to create as well as the mathematical formula we can use to create it. So let's see how we can translate this into Cinema 4D. We'll start by bringing in a formula and we want this one here, which will generate a spline for us. And that gives us the default sine wave spline. And the shape is actually being generated by this default formula, which is based on trigonometry and basically dictates how the spline curves over time and on what angle. And we won't go too deep into the mathematics behind this, but if we refer to the formula we found online, we just need to put these three equations into the X, Y, and Z dimensions of our formula. And this is the correct formatting for Cinema 4D, which I'll also leave down below. So now that I've pasted the formula in, we're getting a segment of the trefoil shape down here. But in order to see the whole shape, we need to extend the time value down here, which gives us a very jagged representation of the knot shape. But to smooth that out, we just need to increase these samples back down here until it's nice and smooth, like so. And as easy as that, we've got our knot. And I might just rotate this so it matches the example as well. So to give this a bit of thickness, we can select our formula spline and add a sweep. And we'll hold Alt when we bring that in so it's automatically applied as a parent. And then we need a shape to sweep along our knot. So let's use a circle. And we'll place that inside our sweep, which is way too big by default. So let's drop it down to 0.5 centimeters. And we now get our knot shape in 3D. So you could leave it there and render this off, but let's take a look at a few things we could do to optimize our shape. Let's switch to lines mode. And I think we've got way more polygons than we need here. So to reduce the polygons along the width of the shape, grab the circle and drop the number of intermediate points down here like so. Then to reduce the amount of polygons along the shape of our knot, we can actually do that back in the formula spline by decreasing the samples as low as we can get while keeping the rough shape. And I think about 60 might be all right for this. And we can always throw this into a subdivision surface when we're ready to render this later on as well. But you might notice we've also got something weird happening down here where it looks like part of the original spline is overlapping. And if we adjust the time offset here again, we can see that that is indeed the case. So let's just step through this in smaller increments until it's only slightly overlapping. About there should probably do it. Then to turn this into a single continuous shape, we'll actually need to convert the formula to a plain old spline by hitting C on the keyboard to make it editable. And if we turn our sweep off for a second and switch to point mode, we can zoom in on those overlapping points, these two here, and let's merge them together by right clicking and we'll choose weld. And we'll just weld them as a point in between to create a smooth continuous spline. And now if we enable our sweep again, we're still getting that edge down here, but I think all we need to do is grab our spline and just check close spline. And we now have a nice smooth continuous shape. So if we switch back to shaded mode, we could put our optimized knot into a subdivision surface and we can call this done. And aside from rendering the shape as it is, you could also apply some dynamics to it and create some cool rope effects like this or link the knots together to create something interesting like this. I'll leave a link below to the project file as well as these two examples. And I'll also include another set of different torus knots using some other formulas as well, which you can use in your own projects. All of our project files are completely free for our lovely pro members. And if you'd like us to answer your Cinema 4D questions like we've done today, become a member for access to our weekly Q and A's, as well as loads of other training and resources to help you learn Cinema 4D faster. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com forward slash membership. Okay, that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.